we'll, since we've, we're finished with the X-Acto knife and all that, for now at least, I, I think so, unless there's any problem. We'll try and dry fit most of those pieces before gluing them. Here's the torso and the, yes, that's the butt. That's the tail. It fits quite nicely. Oh, no, I think, uh, oh, that could be, that could fit better, I think. Just under here, there's probably a little trouble there. And uh, there. Just put that here, out of uh, out of our way. Now let's see. No, it's the other way around. Yes, slightly better. All right. I'd probably use a little bit of milliput to to fix it, but uh, it, no, it would be all right. Now this one. This leg, which leg is it? It's oh, it's this one really. Here. Oh, it fits very properly. However, this. Ah yes. Hmm. This means we're going to have to use milliput. I'm afraid. I was afraid of that. As you see, there are lines here. Behind the legs. That won't really, no, that won't be really nice. Let's see how the arms fit. This arm, yes, it fits reasonably well. I think there's no need for putty here. Perhaps here a little in the, in the axle and near the uh, pectoral muscle. And there. This one, I think perhaps here, behind the, behind the shoulder. We'll see about that later. This, well, we've, uh, we've tested it really, and uh, I think this goes on very well. Let's test the arms again with the big axe. So this, no, this, this just goes in the other way around. La. Here and here. Oh, this is going to be heavy. <laughs> I would probably pin this or at least use putty. Let's fit our antlers. This one, I think, uh, does it go this way? No, yes, I think it goes this way, indeed. This way, like so. And uh, this way, I guess. Yes, quite fine. And there, the horns. Right, I think we'll start building the thing. Now, let's push that away a bit. All these little filings, we don't need them. We are, however, going to need some milliput, which I have here. This is milliput um, gray, uh, green, yellow green. Uh, this is an old, uh, an old pack. Don't be concerned by the appearance of it. I think uh, it's all right. It's uh, old, but it has served me well. And I'll use super glue. I have two in case one of them doesn't work. Um, 
these super glues, well, you you can buy them. Th this is liquid super glue. You can buy it pretty much anywhere. I um, I like the this the, these uh, nozzles because they are uh, they're a bit flowy, but uh, you know some people would would want more precision, which is perfectly all right. Um, what else can I tell you? Yes, super glue. Uh, you have to use super glue. You can't use uh, any other type of, of uh, uh, plastic glue, for example. You can't use on, on these ones, especially since you're going to glue metal to resin. And uh, plastic glue doesn't work on resin. It only works on plastic, so that doesn't work on, on that sort of thing. So it's super glue all the way. Or if you're uh, in that sort of mood, you could always get you, you could always get uh, araldite, araldite glue. That uh, that's a two-part glue that forms some sort of of putty, and uh, the bond is very very strong, stronger than super glue, and it uh, it lasts for a very long time, uh, much longer than than super glue that does lose its adhesive powers. Uh, with t uh, with time, uh, however, araldite takes, I think, hours to cure. At least twelve hours to cure superficially. Uh, eight is it eight hours? Well, it's a very long time indeed. So, um, araldite only for your big projects and only when you can manage with uh, rubbers or whatever contraption to uh, to maintain the two pieces the way they are, they are supposed to be glued. But anyway, super glue it is. I think we'll start by doing the legs. Take a little bit of super glue, put a drop, oh, that's a big drop, inside this one. And I think this is this leg, yes, perfect, perfect fit. Same thing with the other one. There. On the bottom of that. Here. Press. I think it should glue. Oof, doesn't really. Now, well, it happens. It should should be resting. I think. Close that super glue. It happens. It's not because the glue is old. I think it's more because of the temperature, perhaps. I will get my exacto knife out. Don't worry, I sharpen it regularly. I do change the blades. Cut a bit of this milliput. We only need a little. We don't need too much. That's oh, that's even too much. This is the hardening substance, the gray substance. And this is the, um, shall we say, putty, the stone-like substance. Milliput is water-soluble. I like I like it. I like its texture. I um, do prefer it to green stuff most of the time, but that's only a personal opinion. I will mix those two. When you're mixing any two-part putty, you do a little uh, sort of little boudin like that, and uh, a little sausage, if you will, and you fold it in two, and you go ahead and you do another sausage, and you fold that in two, and you do another sausage with the same thing folded in two, which you roll.
and so on and so forth. Folding in two every time. That is a very efficient way. You can fold in three as well. There's a very efficient way to uh, mix these kinds of things. And uh, it also heats them slightly. It's much more interesting than kneading time and again. It's also easier. We'll have it done in no time. Yeah, that's pretty much mixed. We'll set it on that corner here. There, ah, uh, yes, this has dried. Now, in order for this to dry more quickly, I will grab a little bit of milliput, put it at the bottom of the hole for the tail. put a bit of glue in. The thing about milliput is it doesn't need air to dry. It's a two-part putty. It doesn't dry at, uh, by, by, by in contact with oxygen. So you can put some glue in and uh, it still will dry. If you put that here. Oh, I see. <laughs> it's because the tail peg, it doesn't really fit exactly because the tail peg is a little soft on the uh, on that casting. It's a it's a flaw. It's a notable flaw. I am slightly disappointed. Not too much. You see, because it fits, nonetheless. Now we will let it dry for a bit. And we'll probably uh, uh, correct the flaws uh, later on a bit. So we'll do the head because uh, I think we should do the whole head before st sticking it to the torso. I'll get a little ball of milliput, put that on here. Oh dear. There. If it would stick. Put on a slightly bit of the glue, just a drop really, and put the horns in. Put the horns on rather, I don't know. In, on, there. With the milliput, it'll glue and fill in every of the little gaps that there might be, and instantly maintain the bond all while all the while the uh, super glue dries, and the milliput, not needing oxygen oxygen to dry, will dry even inside. I'll do the same thing with this very small bowl of milliput. You can use green stuff as well for that. In in here. I can there on that 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 part. Just a tiny bit of glue, just a drop really. Oh, that's too much. Well, never mind. I'll pick up the right antler. I think the little ball of milliput has slipped. Really, I'll grab another one. Mm. How unfortunate. There. And there. Push that ball in. And we'll go. Yes. There we, there we go. Needs to be pressed a bit. There. 
here. That's perfect. That's a perfect fit. Goodness, this really doesn't look too good. I mean, the sculpt is, it, I mean, the, the miniature is what it's supposed to be, really. But uh, I don't really like those antlers. There, that's what it was on the glue. Here, oh dear, that's too much of a drop. There, far too much. I'll perhaps use a little bit of that. It's kitchen roll, really, to absorb it a little. There, and now. We will press this here. If I had used gel super glue, or gel super glue rather, it, uh, it wouldn't have helped either. I would still have had to use putty to for, for that instant bond. Yeah, this is our head. Yes, it's it's in that direction that, that they go. Ah, I know. Anyway. Ah, some people will find it absolutely awesome, I'm sure. But, you know. Hmm. Oh well. Now, I think we'll cover that up a little. That's our torso, and these are our arms. I think we will have to use the same technique. Little ball of milliput right inside here. Little bit of glue. More than a little bit actually because this is a big joint. This is yes, this is this arm. It's all right, the peg is correct. And here we go. This glues almost instantly. Ball of milliput. Not too big. A uh, bit of glue. Mm -hmm, yes, mm -hmm. almost too much. And the other arm. Here we go. You could use some liquid putty to fill in the gaps here and there. And uh, you would do well to do that, actually. But um, I always use milliput because uh, it's water soluble, so you can, can have, um, you can actually uh, dilute milliput in water and, you know, do that. I think, uh, yes. I think we could, uh, yes, I think we'll correct a bit of the gaps here. We'll grab a little bit of milliput, just a, just a tad, nothing much. And uh, we'll put it here for now. I'm going to use this exacto knife. And there's no need to waste some, uh, some water. Oh, cap that. No need to waste some, some water or, or anything or fetch any, uh, any bowl of water or, or whatever. You, you could, but it would be really drowning your miniature. Just, I just lick this part of my palm because I rarely ever, if ever, use that. I use my, I use my fingers, and uh, it's a bit disgusting. It's my habit, really. You can, uh, you can do that, or you can fetch maybe a very small cup of cup of water. You can invert a base, for example, and put some water in. You really don't need much. So. Put some saliva inside this 
and uh, there. Just smear your your blade, a little bit of saliva, so that you can apply the milliput properly. You can use sculpting tools. Actually, it's slightly better. But I've always found that the exacto knife in a pinch does the trick. I'm pressing the milliput down here. Even trying to imitate a bit the uh, direction of the hair on the side of that leg. Do not lick your blade directly. You would cut yourself and uh, also ingest little bits of lead and little bits of resin and little bits of glue and all that sort of stuff. So it's not to be recommended. Lick something else or put something put put water on something else and then only then use your blade or use your instrument. This is a bit too flaky. I will use more saliva. That's a pretty neat trick, you know. And you can only do that with milliput. It's, uh, it's the only water soluble putty I found, except um, Sculpey, Super Sculpey. No, it's not Sculpey. Sculpey is the one that's cooked, like like Fimo. It's uh, Magic Sculpt. It's actually uncooked. There, yeah, I'll put that uh, somewhere here. Somewhere over the rainbow. And I'll smooth things out here using my finger because why not? One can use a sculpting tool. It's often slightly more efficient, but I don't have any at hand. There. For those of you who would revile me, saying, oh, how disgusting it is to use saliva, well, know this. Most of the professional painters I've encountered actually lick their brushes with the paint. I'll take a, grab a little ball of that. Uh, that milliput and uh, there's a little line here that should be corrected. At least I'm not licking any of those substances. I'm licking my hand and then using the saliva as a source of water. Right. That's almost done. It's a bit tricky. And smooth it all out with your finger. Using liquid putty is uh, arguably the most straightforward process. 
but I'm old school. There, you see? Load line corrected. I'm not going to do the other ones because it's the same process. You do it with everything. Now I'm going to try and uh, glue all those things together. If I can find the cap of my... Ah, yes, there it is. Oh dear, so messy. Messy, messy me. There. I'll grab a little bit of milliput to consolidate the hold. And I'll put it uh, here inside this uh, slit, I guess. Another ball here, perhaps. Can never have too many balls. And a drop of glue or two. Because this is uh, about the largest bond needs to be made. Here. The body and the legs. Ah, uh, yes, that fits perfectly. And it's reasonably balanced as well. Oopsie daisies. There. I'll do the same for the torso and the head. Put a little ball of milliput inside this joint. Perhaps another one. This might be trickier because it's metal on resin, but because it's super glue and because it's milliput, it might take more time to dry, but it will actually fit properly. Oh dear. Mm -hmm. This peg is much shorter than the intended hole, so we will have to add milliput. More milliput, more milliput. And more glue over it, actually. So, let's fit it now. Oh, not this way. The other way around. Oh dear, an antler has gone. There. Just place it back and let it dry that way. Sometimes they're just stubborn. See, that's better. Oh, however, it's not quite balanced anymore. It will be very top-heavy and front-heavy. So I think, yes, have, we'd have to pin it on the base. I'd pin it on the scenic base myself, but I don't have any at hand. So this is how it's supposed to go. We will do the same technique that has not betrayed us so far. A ball of milliput here. If it would stick. Here in the in the wrist. And here another one. In the other wrist. Perhaps it's a bit big, but as we have just seen, better safe than sorry. For once, I won't put the glue in the holes, I'll put the glue on the balls. Here. And here. Oh dear. Let's not glue all of the arm. There. This goes here and this goes here. If we slide it, it should be. Yes, it should be fine. Yes. Let's 
it's a bit uh, doesn't fit quite exactly that's always a problem in uh, in those kits I'll get my exacto knife and remove the surplus of the milliput it has gone out of the sides of this of these um, joints ball joints and uh, and those those metal parts especially when there are two separate points to which they're supposed to be attached they uh, pretty much always do that alas alas three times alas there's a little hole here I'll reuse a bit of the milliput ball that was in excess to plug it with my exacto knife plug it plug it plug it plug it plug it get in there you silly goose Yeah, that's much better. Right. As you can see, this does not stand on its own. Yes, it's really sad. However, we are supposed to put it on this base. I think we'll glue it on the furthermost edge. And that way, at least, it will be, yeah, it'll fit somewhat no it won't be possible actually I think I think we'll have to pin it yes I have my little drill here usually I pin before I uh, even mount the miniature but uh, Oh dear, this resin is very hard. Usually I pin before I mount my miniature, but here didn't really think about it. Thought it would go on properly. This is a tedious process. It's always hard to start. Well, oh, I guess. Hmm. We'd have to use a Dremel or something. Let's see. What could we do? Yes, I think. For now, I think we can glue this with putty and super glue and it will in all probability be okay when dried in any case if I were to paint that miniature I would uh, unbase it and put it on a scenic base because it's much better especially for such large pieces I mean really Okay, I'll put big balls of milliput here. At least we see that the, uh, the bonds of the miniature are pretty much cured. I'll put lots of glue here. Loads of it. It only needs a, a little glue, but I was never one to be parsimonious. I think there's a drop of glue that's dropped on the on the calf here. Yes, on the wolf's calf. And we press heavily, heavily, really heavily with the putty. And it will elevate the miniature a little, but never mind that because 
it will give us some uh, a little bit of elevation to um, base our miniature and to put some flocks in without it lo looking it looking too contrived. I will, however, remove the excess putty from the side. Now, with that kind of putty and um, with the glue, etc., always work in a well ventilated area, which is pretty much what we have here. And uh, always wait at least eight hours for the putty to cure properly and for the glue to form a proper bond before you think about painting that sort of thing. Right? Let's see what we have here. Yes, it's done. It's glued. It fits. Nothing is falling apart. <laughs> There's uh, maybe one or two, mo uh, one or two um, very small gaps behind his behind, basically, to, to correct. But I think that's, that's it. The rest could be uh, left well enough alone. See? I think that's pretty neat. All right. I've built the Getterix. Um, Getterix? No, Getterix. I've built the Getterix Swap Wolf. And uh, I'm extremely glad this was a Beast of War exclusive. Bye then!